Okay, we are back. And this time around, we are being joined with a new uh, character. <laughs> his, <laughs> oh, name, his name uh, is Mr. John Alexander. John, why don't you introduce yourself to our viewing audience and give the names of your children and your father. Uh, you have a special situation in terms of fathers. So would you do that for our viewing audience? Okay, my name is John L. Alexander. My father was named John H. Alexander. I'm a father of eight, five boys and three girls. Amen. Hey, would you get their names? If, you uh, if I can remember all of them. <laughs> 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 well, let me start from older. My oldest son name is Jonathan. My, my next oldest is Lavonia. There's Lisa, Alicia, Latrice. Oh my goodness, hold on, man. You, man, I'm getting old, so let me think about it. There's Jesse, Stefan, and Jordan. Is that eight, y'all? Was that eight? I wasn't counting. Oh, well, I don't trust that it was eight. We're, we're and Latrice, so okay. it's eight. Latrice, that, okay. That's okay. eight, and, and those are my lovely ones. Now, I do have uh, a godson by the name of Chuck, uh, another one by the name of Jamal, and the other 200 some I can't remember all their names, <laughs> but it's, it's that many. Okay. Amen. Amen, amen. And uh, just a brief, uh, what, 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 what's your claim to fame? What do you do? Well, I am the head photographer for the Rainbow Push organization. I'm the personal photographer for uh, Reverend Jesse Jackson. I'm also a NBA, NFL, WNBA, the Red Stars, the Chicago Sky uh, photographer. I uh, also shoots for the governor every now and then, maybe uh, Governor Quinn, uh, sometimes uh, Rahm Emanuel, uh, Bob Fioretti, and the list is just really actually too big to kind of really name, but I'm kind of sought all over the country. I'm uh, the lead photographer for uh, the state of Oklahoma when I'm down there with a with attorney by the name of David Slane. Um, so it, it's, it's kind of big, and I'm kind of modest about it, but it's, it's pretty huge. Excellent. And I must say, you are quite a modest. And it's one more. I'm studying to be a, uh, a trusted Google photographer, so I'm like about 30 days away from doing that, and it's only like about maybe two blacks in the whole country that Excellent. is a certified Excellent. trusted photographer for Google. Okay, excellent. excellent, excellent. And you two are a minister, aren't you? Yes, I'm a quiet one, though. <laughs> quiet, okay. <laughs> All right, so this is a, uh, a first for me, having three men of the cloth on the same show at the same time for my guest ain't guessing. So uh, we're going to continue on with our discussion. This is our annual salute to fathers. Uh, today's theme is Father's Impact on the Community. Uh, before we went to break, uh, Professor, you, you, were, you were discussing and had an interesting point. You want to continue with that? Yes, sir, Brother Loving. I, I was talking about the fact that there are going to be women that's going to be watching this show. Yes. And then they're going to be saying mentally that they are the father in their household. Absolutely. And so, if you don't mind me, I want to talk about the woman at Zarephat. Okay, go ahead. And she is raising a boy. Mm -hmm. But times are hard, money is funny, uh, change is strange, and she's still wondering how is she possibly going to be able to take care of him. She's down to the last meal. She goes out and, and she finds out that, guess what? There's nothing left in the cupboard but one more meal. And she tells the boy, look, after we eat this, we're gonna lay down and die. Now, how do I make that present for today? The woman that's looking at that money that's not, that's real funny, the bank account don't have a comma in it, and then it has a zero at the end of the period. And she's wondering how she's going to continue to, t to take care of what God has given her. But what is she speaking into the child? What is she saying to the child or the children? What, what, what foundation is she giving him or her? And based on what she's saying, she could be actually killing the child or inspiring him or her to do what's necessary to get to the next level. That, that's one thing that I know for sure. If God lets you get here, he got something for you. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. oh, yes. If he lets you get here, how do he let you get here? That's all you got to do is just wait till the doctor smack you and you already shouting. Mm -hmm. And while you're already shouting, guess what? You're really not shouting about being in life. You're shouting about what you're going to do in life. And so that's more important. And I like the fact that my brother says that, look, what I do with my children, I'm expecting them to do something greater in life. I'm only reflecting what my father taught me. This is what I'm saying. I'm reflecting what my father taught me. Okay. Every time I say something in my martial arts class, I'm telling the children, this is what my father told me. Now let me explain this to you. He gave me the lecture first. 
before he gave me the leather second. <laughs> <laughs> Wise man. And I said, he says, and every comedian does this. That story, this gonna hurt you, this gonna hurt me more than it's gonna hurt you. I would always go, really? In my mind, understand, in my mind, right. because I never would let it come out my mouth because I was disciplined enough to know that was suicide. Children miss that. You don't question what your parent is about to discipline you to, in, a, in a way. That's right. So he said to me one day, you won't understand it till you have your own. Oh, yeah. He's looking down the road at his grandchildren, which I can't see. Mm -hmm. And then one day he said something to me. He says, you know what? You need to look into the stock uh, for China. I'm like, look in the stock, buy stock in China. <laughs> My father is the first man that I thought knew everything. Oh yeah? Okay. And even when I got older, you I still, still believe. You still looked up to him. Because every time I, I say something to him, he always said answer. Okay. Mm -hmm. not, not just let me give you something to give you something. He always gave me the answer. Mm. The answer. The answer. Mm. And so that's what the word says. Meditate on these things both day and night. Okay. It's real important. I like the fact that you, you said you got eight children. I love my eight children, man. And you know, I love my two. <laughs> and, and the fact of the matter is having eight kids keeps me young because I got eight grandkids. Amen. So that keeps me young and keeps me up to date with what my children are doing and, and, and to be a part, like he said, making them do certain things. I'm one of those fathers that I was hard disciplined. My father died when I was six, okay. but my stepfather, Pastor H.L. Robinson, is the one who spanked me. Yes, sir. That's the one I got the whooping from. That's the one that set me down and chastised me. That's the one that had me to do things and told me things before they happened, and I end up in places because I didn't listen to my father. Did not listen to my father. But now, I listen to everything he say. He say, son, go over there and sit down. I'm sitting <laughs> down. Absolutely. I am not at your, at moving. Your age now. Absolutely. At, my, at my age today, 56 yes, years old, mm -hmm. if my dad tell me to go sit down, I'm, I'm, I might cry right now, but I will not move. Yes, sir. My son, 34 years old this year, if I tell him to sit down, he will not move. My grandkids, if I could brought my kids in the room with me right now and say, sit, ain't nobody going to argue with me. They're going to sit down because mm -hmm. daddy spoke. Absolutely. And I was in a place the other day, and this child was just running around, <laughs> running around, running around, and I'm just getting kind of, you know, angry. So I say, son, stop before your mother do something to you. Go sit over there and play that game. That little kid just went, just like that. We, us, are important. Yes, sir. Yes, we, we are. We're super important, and we got to know that because you wouldn't have three ministers up here saying it. We're saying it because we're fathers. Yes, oh, that's, it's, that's what it's all about, fathers. This is fathers. Right. Fatherhood. You know, I'm a, you know, I'm sensitive, so you might see a tear roll down my eye, man, because I just love, I, I, I was over by my newspaper, and some kids broke into a fight. Mm -hmm. I see men sitting in the car. I run to the fight. Yes, sir. Yeah. And get in the middle of the fight with the police, breaking up kids. Mm -hmm. and, the po and, the, and the young boy, eighth grader, swung on the police like seven times before the police hit him. I said, man, where are the men? Where, why, why are you sitting in the car? Right. 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 And I'm sitting out there going there and breaking up a fight with a suit in town. And these guys sit in the car, then they talk to me. I said, man, don't say nothing to me. I'm gone. Okay. You should have been down there helping me. Mm -hmm. It's 50 kids and it's three men. That makes me upset, Leon. Yes, sir. Okay. You know, we often hear about um, our fathers giving us advice and what have you. What's the greatest advice your child or children have gave you? And we're going to start with uh, John. My son, Jonathan, that's my oldest son who's a minister now mm -hmm. himself. Uh, my problem at one point was communications. I, I know we spoke about the fathers being absent. Yes, I was one of those fathers that was absent because I thought it was best for somebody else to raise my child because the wife, the woman, had got married to somebody else. Okay. But he said, Dad, Dad, you my dad. Mm -hmm. I need you. And that was it. And I never left his side since. Okay. I never knew because I didn't have that father figure to tell me that. Mm -hmm. And the father that did tell me that, I didn't listen to him. Now it's important for me to feed that information to other people. And I do in the McDonald's and Burger Kings and the Wendy's so and the restaurants and the streets. Yes. It's part of who I am every single day. And I'm, st I'm glad to be up here with these three guys because I know they're just like I am. Yeah. Strict, straight, and hard. 
<laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. All right, uh, Professor Jackson, what's the greatest uh, or best advice your child or children have given you? My youngest daughter would always say, is there another station on the radio other than gospel music? <laughs> and I would say, yes it is. But we listening to the best one. Okay, all right. Your turn. I remember when uh, my daughter Angel was about to be born, um, Reverend Herbert Lasseter, who was a assistant minister at the church at the time, he stopped me and he said, remember when your baby gets here that is just as much as she is coming to learn from you and her mother she's also coming to teach you both because she's a soul on the journey mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of life just like you don't forget that she's coming here with wisdom and knowledge and etc so I started to pay attention to that a lot and one of the things that, you know, I have with my daughter, I feel as though is a very strong connection. You know, people who know me know you can almost randomly see me anywhere with my daughter. Mm -hmm. right. That's just known. Okay. If, you know, I've made a commitment that if I tell her I'm going to do something, this is the lesson that I, she didn't teach me directly. This was my indirect teaching. Lesson, right. I made a promise to her. If I tell you yes, I'm always going to do it. Mm -hmm. Always. No excuses. She tries very hard to get a yes out of me, <laughs> almost for everything, because, <laughs> because she knows that I'm going to stand by. Now, this is why. I don't ever want her to grow up when I'm not around, either not in the body or not in the space, where she feels as though a man can tell her one thing and do something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So, so... She keeps me on my toes because my yes means something to her. Mm -hmm. I can't have her come back and say, but daddy, you say it. Right. See, because the thing about it with, with, with manhood, one of the things with manhood is, what does your word mean? Mm -hmm. What does your word mean? You know, I, I remember as a kid, dad used to tell me, he's like, you know, a man is somebody that can, that can um, stand on what they believe and, and then do what they say they're going to do. Now, how does that play out in, 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 in real life? And it plays out because you are known by your word and the influence of your word. Okay, if I go somewhere and he meets somebody that knows me and he says, hey, I know Reverend Galen McDowell. Now, the response of that person is going to be based upon my word, how I treat them, the influence that I have. Right now, the influence of our word as fathers many times don't have the impact with our children that it should. That's why That's right. his children will stay still. My daughter at 14, I've been taking her everywhere since she was a baby. She, and she is the most behaved child you'll ever want to see. Next okay. to yours. Well, Next to yours. <laughs> <laughs> because, I will, because I refuse to have it any other way. That's okay. right. Okay. I refuse to have it any other way. We walk in a space and she's not speaking up. Did you speak? Did you say it loud enough for people to hear it? Or what am I doing? Because you have to train up a child in the right, way that right, they would go. go. That's what scripture teaches us. So my lesson, for me, the lesson that my daughter teaches me is I always have to use my influence in the proper way. How am I showing up as an example? Can I give one more quick brief example? Go ahead. I used to work in management at Dominic's. Mm -hmm. And I had a, um, a young lady, we opened a store on Roosevelt and Canal. It's closed now. Yeah. I was one of the first managers there. Mm -hmm. I, I opened the store as the customer service manager. Okay. We're in the process of making sure, because this is new in the community, the community was, you know, one of the more impoverished areas in the city of Chicago. And I had this young lady um, cleaning up like we would do every evening. Make sure this store is spick and span, spotless. This young lady walks up to me, she says to me, can I ask you a question? I said, sure you can. What do you, what's up? She said, is your wife white? <laughs> wow. I said, why? She's like, because you like everything so clean. <laughs> and I said to her, do you realize what you just said about yourself? And she didn't understand what I, my question. She was like, well, what do you mean? And I said, what does that have to do with being clean? I said, first of all, and when I, I was mad at the time, I said, she's black. I said, but that's not the point. You're insulting yourself. Now, here's the thing. Once I got an opportunity to know her, realize dad's not in the space, mm -hmm. 
realized that the space that she was living in in that area was not the best. So the example that she saw as a man, she couldn't connect me being a regular Joe black guy that would want to see excellence. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now that told, that told me that she d did not see good examples of men or she would have never made that statement. That's right. That is absolutely Very right. So. Can I help my brother? <laughs> Jump in. Go ahead. Due to the fact that your, your daughter is in high school now, I would go up to my daughter's high school, Morgan Park, with my martial arts pants on. <laughs> and the children didn't know me personally, but they would say this one thing, oh, that's the karate man, Alter's father. Four years of my daughter being at Morgan Park, nobody messed with her. One of those young fellas giving her a little hard time, trying to smack on her mm -hmm. while she walk away. Right. Because they knew who her father was. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And they didn't want to meet her father in that kind of condition. <laughs> and so now that your girl is in, in high school, you have to go up there so the fellas mm -hmm. you know who they see are. you. Mm -hmm. And, and recognize that if you do get out of line, you're going to have to deal with me mm -hmm. before you have to deal with the administration. Okay. okay. And so that is, that is so important. The other part of it is at our school, train a child up in the right way. When he or she becomes old enough, they will not stray away. If the young men do not open the door for who's ever bringing them to class, that's 75 jumping jacks right off the bat. Learn how to open a door for a woman. That's Learn right. how to open the door for a woman. And then you must say, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. And I interject sometimes when they're talking to their parents. D excuse me? Did you say yes, ma'am? Oh, yes, ma'am. Did you say yes, sir? Yes, sir. And so we come back to this thing of trying to recommit ourselves to community, mm -hmm. no matter where we go, right. so that our young men, matter of fact, 40, 46%, of those that are incarcerated are African Americans. Oh, yes. So, is that 40, 40, 46% is African American? We can almost probably say half of that there was not a father in their life. I would say more. That's usually the case. And, the case. and that's, that's to be actually absolutely true because you, you find one day I was preaching a sermon even at my church one day and I was talking about my father and my father and this and this and that and we was talking and the men stood up and you know they came to the altar and got prayer. So the pastor came up behind me and he just started crying. And I just went back, I said, Pastor Gaston, why are you crying? Mm -hmm. He said, I never knew my dad. Hmm. Oh, wow. He never knew his dad. And so sometime when I'm out in the streets and I'm at McDonald's or Burger King and I'm meeting young men, because one day I was in, in Skokie, man, 11 o'clock at night coming from another television station. And it was these wild young boys in their mixed color acting crazy as I don't know what. And I told Naima, I said, Naima, get ready to call the police. I got to get them. I got to get them. Mm -hmm. And I went over to him and I went to the biggest one there and I whispered in his ear. I said, man, you embarrass me. I don't want to want you to go to jail. You need to stop all that noise. And I expect you to stop all those other guys from making that noise. Before we know it, we was in there having lessons mm -hmm. about black history and getting a couple of them to come to ECTV. It was only the fact that one guy came up to me and say, I don't even know my father. I said, now you know him. And yes, I put my hands out go. and shook his hand. And he go. became my friend. There so it ain't, we gotta be scared. The problem is right. I think we just too scared to say what we gotta say, like going up to the school and being a father. Just imagine the three of us go to a high school together. That's right. We come to your daughter's high school and say, okay, you gotta That's deal right. with these three guys. That's right. There is a whole different look. We ain't police officers. Mm -hmm. right. And to close these, and to deal with these young men without a badge, without just a gun, just, just my strength yes. as who I am. Mm -hmm. And that's what's important. These men up here got strength. And that's what most of us men need to be doing. We need to be standing up together because to collectively together, we can stop all this. Yeah. But and we, you know, the thing about it is, I think we've become a society of being too relative. Nobody has a bottom line. Right. What do you stand for? Hmm. What do you stand for? If, you know, I, it, it, I'm as liberal as they come. I believe in freedom mm -hmm. in oh, general. Certainly, right. me too. I Absolutely. believe in freedom. Do your thing. Mm -hmm. But what do you stand for? It should be bottom lines. If I'm walking to a space and things are going on that I don't agree with, I'm not staying, mm -hmm. okay? That's teaching my child, but it's also teaching others because I teach others how to treat me by how I handle myself. Right, absolutely, right, right. right. So it's important that we aren't scared, mm -hmm. that we're willing to be a stand, 
You know, I had a similar situation. My daughter goes to a very nice high school, but some kids were bullying some other kid, and they were pushing them down in the snow a couple of months ago. I got out of my car. I walked up to him. I'm like, what's going on? Oh, nothing's going on, sir. Oh, nothing's going on. And it's a parking lot full of parents. You're looking. And, I'm, and I have a you're suit the, on, too. Right, right. You're the only one. And see, see, the thing about it, when I told my daughter, she's like, why did you do that? I said, I'm not going to sit around mm -hmm. and watch a child get bullied and his parents all around. And nobody and, and the kids are unwilling to even go into the school and tell an administrator that this child is being bullied. Now, why is that important? That's important because, you know, when you don't act like a king. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Put it out there. All right. You know, the, the, the robbers will come in through the back door and they'll influence your children. They'll have them picking up behavior and doing things, et cetera, because most of the time these kids are acting like this in these, in these uh, schools, in these neighborhoods. They're learning it from somebody. They're not learning things in a vacuum. They're learning bullying behavior. They're learning many other things. So we have to be mindful. Again, it goes back to leadership. I want to just leave because I, I don't want to take up all yeah, the time. Sometimes leadership. Down. Leadership. leadership. Leadership is influence. Mm -hmm. How am I a leader in my space? Am I a transformation agent in my space? Through my example, through my word, through my actions, my look. How I, you know, you're not going to, look, <laughs> you're not going to catch me with my pants half off my behind. Mm. I'm a grown man. When I see guys my age, no, uh. no offense, fellas. But the example that you said. We're going to have to come back from that one. Yeah, we did. We did. Okay. We got okay. to okay. part yeah. two for this. All right. Yeah, we're going to have to part two for this because, you know, when a man shows up looking like a man, it says a lot. Yes, it does. And when you show up looking like uh, the little boys, whatever, I tell a person in a heartbeat. I mean, let me stop because I'm, I'm about to roll <laughs> in this. <laughs> no, gentlemen, I got to think about gentlemen, it. Gentlemen, 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 <laughs> gentlemen. It's been a joy and a pleasure yeah. hanging out with you with the old clock on the wall. Yeah. We. Says it's time to go. We just can't do this thing no more. What I'd like for each of you to do is give the time, this time of the show, I want you to give some words of wisdom, about a minute's worth of words of wisdom. John Alexander, starting with you. Man, I ain't got nothing to say but this. Okay. Y'all need to come to find the three of us. The they, need to, they need to come find the three of us. Okay. And get some lessons of life. Okay. Galen. I would say that your awareness of who you are as a child of God is what men, women, and children need above all else. Because when you have a sense of value for yourself, when you really believe that I am created out of the best, I'm the image and likeness of God. Before I was formed in my mother's womb, God knew me. Before I had a gender, before I had a race, before I had a background, a past, an education, I was spirit. That's what I need to know. Okay, Professor Jackson. We've all come together so you can get what it is that you basically need. And if you call the show, we'll be able to help you get what it is that you are already asking for. Amen. Amen. And my, 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 my final thought is, anyone can be a father. It takes a special person to be a dad. Thank you for tuning in. This has been my guest and guest. I want to thank all of my great guests. Thank you. And the crew also. Check this out, son. Uh, education is the thing if you want to compete. Because without it, boy, life ain't very sweet. Now I love this man, and now I know why. Cause I'm gonna need his strength until the day that I die. My mama loves him, and I can tell. By the way she looks at him when he holds my little sister Nell. I heard her say just the other day, if it hadn't